Thank you, Mark and Dan, for the opportunity to speak on safe access. So after we've uh, worked up the patient and determined that they need to go to the OR, the first step, obviously, is getting access into the abdomen. So conventional trocar placement, as you can see here, typically involves an umbilical port, a uh, subxiphoid port, a uh, uh, subcostal port in the uh, anterior axillary line, and a subcostal port in the midclavicular line. These ports can range anywhere from 2 millimeters to 12 millimeters. Uh, I think most would uh, you know, agree that we need at least one port uh, large enough to extract the specimen. Um, there are a couple different uh, ways, there's actually three different uh, common ways to uh, enter the abdomen. Traditionally, the Hassan trocar placement and the varus entry have been the two that have been studied the most. More recently, there's optical trocar placement as well. The uh, multiple randomized trials actually been performed and the underpowered have not shown a difference or in safety between either of these two. So uh, an open Hassan technique typically is going to involve a uh, periumbilical incision with dissection down to the fascia. Once the fascia is encountered, uh, the fascia would be incised. Here you see the umbilical stalk being uh, released, the fascia is being elevated, and then a suture will be placed both in the superior and inferior portions of that fascia with the fascia elevated. That suture then can be secured to a port to keep the port in place. Was that X? Yeah, yeah. And then for a varus entry, um, the uh, uh, varus entry typically involves a, an incision in the skin. And Typically after that, though not shown in this video, you would elevate the fascia. Some people would use penetrating towel clips on the skin. Uh, we, we tend to use fascial uh, elevators, like a tracheal elevator, and elevate the fascia. Once you feel the three clicks of the varus needle and you presume it's in the peritoneum, peritoneum you would then perform a saline drop test in order to make sure that that varus needle hasn't in, inadvertently gone into a large vessel or Oregon. And in this case here, the uh, varus needle was being placed in the left upper quadrant. And here you see an optical trocar being used. Um, optical trocars allow you to visualize uh, the different layers of the abdominal wall as you're inserting it. And the optical trocar may be uh, a good way to enter the abdomen in certain cases, especially uh, previous operated abdomens. However, it is important to understand that optical trocars do not prevent injury or no less um, or more safe than either the Hassan or Varus technique. An optical trocar typically requires a zero degree scope, and then once you're in the abdomen, you would then, uh, if you desire, using an angled scope, switch the scope out to a 30 or 45 degree. You can go to the X, okay, that's fine. Okay, so uh, again, for optical trocar in incision, uh, I'm sorry, uh, access, the risk of injury may be greater with direct entry without prior insufflation, and that's something just to keep in mind as well. So uh, a lot of people will just uh, insert the optical trocar without any pneumoperitoneum, but another safe way to do it is, uh, as you saw in that previous video, uh, pneumoperitoneum first, followed by the optical trocar. Now, prior abdominal surgery principles. So, in general, if somebody has had previous surgery, you want to avoid incisions and surgical areas if possible. You can always add an additional port. A patient will still do well if you have five ports instead of four, and if that's what it requires in order to avoid a previously operated area, then I would do that. And then access can be open or closed, meaning Hassan or Varus, but ideally it should be, again, in a quadrant that's free of adhesions caused from the previous surgeries. So as an example, if a patient uh, came to you that has had an open right hemicolectomy through a midline incision, I would certainly consider putting that port in the left upper quadrant, for example, in Palmer's point, uh, as you see here in this picture, just to avoid adhesions from the right hemicolectomy. 
Another common scenario would be an open sigmoid colectomy through, again, a midline incision, and in those cases, I would not choose the umbilicus to be my first entry. Um, I would probably use a subcostal right upper quadrant port uh, first. And I think what's ultimately something that you should get in the habit of if you're not doing it already, but always inspect the area after you've placed your port. So always look down and around and behind. If you're not sure that you might have gone through something because of previous adhesions, once you get the second port in, always remember at the beginning of the case to look back and make sure that you haven't inadvertently put something through intestine or, or other structures. Um, so if somebody has had surgery, for example, maybe a total abdominal colectomy and um, there really isn't a safe quadrant to enter, uh, you might want to consider an open technique or the optical trocar access in those cases. Um, varus needle entry is not unacceptable, however, you just again have to make sure you are uh, very carefully inspecting the area of first access. And I think that, you know, also that starts in your preoperative process. Make sure that you are talking to the patient, letting them know that due to the previous surgeries, there may be a risk for injury, there may be uh, a need to convert to open if there is an injury. It is not a failure to do that. And just, I think, good consent and good discussion about that beforehand can really help with patient expectations. Now, a couple of special considerations. One is obesity. As you see in this picture, it's not uncommon for an obese patient to uh, have an umbilicus that's displaced inferiorly several, several centimeters. If you're wedded to that umbilical port, you may actually be too far away uh, from the gallbladder bed and not have good visualization. Keep in mind that there are long instruments, there are long trocars, there are long varus needles, there are long uh, scopes. Uh, keep those available or make sure you have some. But I think a good rule in an obese patient is rather than always going through the umbilicus, consider always going about 15 centimeters inferior to the subxiphoid or the xiphoid process. That way you will never be too far away from the gallbladder bed. Another consideration would be an umbilical hernia. It is completely reasonable uh, to uh, have your first access go through a small umbilical hernia uh, as long as there's nothing incarcerated within it. If there is an incarcerated tissue and you're not sure if it's bowel, uh, I would definitely avoid the umbilicus. Or, or if it's a very large umbilical hernia, again, I would, I would try to uh, enter in one of the other three access points. And then pregnancy, as was just alluded to before, but in case of access, uh, the gravid uterus can be a problem. It certainly is likely to shift your umbilical port more superiorly, uh, but I would not recommend accessing the umbilicus or in the periumbilical region in somebody who's pregnant, especially in the second and third trimesters. I think one of the, again, subcostal ports is probably your best first entry, and just be careful not to insert a varus needle, for example, into the liver. Uh, that could result in an embolus or bleeding or a bile leak. Uh, the SAGE's guidelines have uh, uh, produced uh, laparoscopy and pregnancy guidelines that are excellent, and you can read more about them there. That's all I have on access. Thank you very much.